بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی ہیو آلریڈی ڈسکسڈ دا سنتھیسز آف ہیم اینڈ ٹوڈے ول ٹاک اوور ہیم ڈیگریٹیشن جونڈس اینڈ اٹس ٹائپس لرننگ آؤٹ کمس آر اسٹیپس آف ہیم ڈیگریٹیشن causes of jaundice its different types and clinical features with laboratory tests degradation of heme the average life span of red blood cells in the circulation is 120 days and they are then taken up and degraded by reticuloendothelial system particularly in the liver and spleen 85% of heme degradation comes from senescent or senile red blood cells while 15% from turnover of immature red blood cells and other hemoproteins in the body bilirubin is the chief bile pigment in our body the rbcs are broken down and liberate approximately 6 grams of hemoglobin in a day the protein part of the hemoglobin is broken down into constituent amino acids which enter into the amino acid pool while the heme is catabolized producing bilirubin and in one day about 250 to 350 mg of bilirubin is formed the bilirubin is the waste product and excreted from our body through bile the rbcs are taken up by macrophages mainly in liver bone marrow and spleen where phagocytosis and lysis occurs hemoglobin is liberated globin is broken down into amino acid pool heme is converted into bilirubin and excreted while the iron part of the heme is stored in as ferritin there are three main processes in the heme catabolism or degradation uptake conjugation and its secretion which can be sequenced into five steps for better understanding step number 1 formation of bilirubin uptake by the liver formation of bilirubin diglucuronide which is a conjugated form secretion of bilirubin into bile and formation of this bilirubin in the bile into urobilinogen in the intestine formation of bilirubin the red blood cells are taken up and degraded by the tissue macrophages of reticuloendothelial cells heme is oxidized into biliverdin which is a green pigment having linear tetrapyrrole structure the enzyme is heme oxygenase causing the oxidation of heme this is this oxidation is in two stages and also requires a coenzyme nadp nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate which is in the reduced form having two 
reducing equivalence or hydrogen ions. Oxygen is needed. Coenzyme is NADPH with two equivalents, reducing equivalents. Enzyme is heme oxygenase, which is present in the microsomes. So it is a microsomal heme oxygenase. In first stage of oxidation, OH group is added into the methanyl bridge of pyrrol 1 and 2 and there is concomitant oxidation of ferrous into the ferric form. A second oxidation by the same enzyme and coenzyme results in the cleavage of the porphyrin ring of the heme and a linear bilirubin is the product. Iron is released and carbon monoxide is released. Iron is stored as ferritin to be utilized as per need of the body while the carbon monoxide performs its biological function. Those are the signaling molecule or as a vasodilator. The bilirubin is a linear tetrapyrrol green in color and it is also a pigment is reduced into a red orange pigment called the bilirubin. The enzyme is bilirubin reductase. Bilirubin is reduced to bilirubin. Coenzyme is NADPH. The final product in the macrophages is bilirubin from the breakdown of RBCs. This bilirubin is fat soluble or lipid soluble and slightly soluble in plasma. So it is transported with the carrier protein albumin which acts or it increases the solubility of bilirubin and act as carrier protein. The bilirubin dissociate from the albumin and spontaneously enters into the hepatocyte. This entrance is in the form of spontaneous facilitated diffusion. Inside the hepatocytes, this bilirubin is not left alone, rather it is bound with the intracellular protein called ligandin and another protein which is called Y protein to prevent its efflux into the blood stream. Third step is formation of bilirubin diglucuronide, which takes place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the liver cells. This formation of bilirubin diglucuronide is a process of conjugation of two molecules of glucuronic acid with the bilirubin, which increases its solubility. The enzyme is microsomal bilirubin uridine diphosphate glucuronyl transferase or simply we call bilirubin UDP glucuronyl transferase or shortly it can be called as bilirubin uridine glucuronyl transferase. Here is the enzyme bilirubin UGT two molecules of UDP, UDP glucuronic acid they are utilized and two UDP molecules are liberated while two molecules of glucuronic acid are conjugated with the bilirubin. The result is the direct bilirubin or conjugated bilirubin in the form of bilirubin diglucuronide. Fourth step is secretion of bilirubin into bile. This bilirubin 
diglucuronide, which is formed in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocyte, is called also called as conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin or soluble bilirubin is actively transported against a concentration gradient into the bile canaliculi and then finally into the bile. This process is energy dependent and only rate limiting step for the entire process of hepatic bilirubin metabolism and it's susceptible to impairment in liver diseases. Some liver diseases impair this rate limiting step. Formation of hirobilinogen in the intestine. The bile secreted by the liver is stored in the gallbladder where it is concentrated and this bile is released in the small intestine on a stimulus that is a fatty meal. The bilirubin glucuronide present in the bile is hydrolyzed and reduced. Enzyme is beta glucuronidase secreted by bacteria in the gut. So intestinal bacteria, they produce enzyme beta-glucuronidase, which hydrolyzes and reduces the bilirubin diglucuronide. By hydrolysis, glucuronic is separated from bilirubin. And when bilirubin is reduced, it is converted into a urobilinogen, a colorless compound. This urobilinogen has got three different fates. Most of it is now oxidized by intestinal bacteria and converted into stercobilin, which is excreted in the feces and gives it the feces a characteristic brown color. Some of urobilinogen is absorbed and participate in the enterohepatic urobilinogen circle, sorry, cycle that is absorbed, resecreted, absorbed, resecreted. So it's called enterohepatic urobilinogen cycle. The remainder of urobilinogen is transported by the blood to kidneys where it is converted to yellow urobilin and excreted. This yellow urobilin gives the urine its characteristic color. This is the summarized chart of heme catabolism. Old RBCs are taken up by the macrophages of reticulo endothelial system, where breakdown of heme takes place and bilirubin is formed which is transported in the blood combined with the albumin as a carrier protein taken up by the hepatocytes or taken up by the liver where its conjugation takes place. The conjugated bilirubin is released into the bile and then a small intestine and this release energy dependent release of conjugated bilirubin is a rate limiting step the only rate limiting steps many diseases liver diseases impair this step the conjugated bilirubin or bilirubin glucuronide is hydrolyzed and reduced by the intestinal bacteria converting into urobilinogen. Urobilinogen is colorless and which is oxidized by other intestinal bacteria, especially in the cecum and large gut 
and convert it into stercobilin and excrete it in the feces. While some urobilinogen enters into the bilt circulation and enters into liver cells where there is establishment of enterohepatic circulation while the remainder urobilinogen enter into the kidney and excreted as urobilin which is yellow in color. It is a more summarized chart of heme degradation taken from Lippincott. In the macrophages of retroendothelial system or reticuloendothelial cells, heme is degraded into bilirubin, which is transported in the blood in association with carrier protein albumin taken up by the liver where conjugation takes place and bilirubin diglucuronide or direct bilirubin or soluble bilirubin is formed. Actively secreted into intestine via the bile and this bilirubin diglucuronide is hydrolyzed and reduced into urobilinogen. Urobilinogen is converted into a colored stercobilin excreted in the feces or colored yellow colored urobilin excreted in the urine. Normal serum levels of bilirubin. The normal level of total bilirubin including indirect and direct is 0.1 to 1.2 milligram per deciliter. Direct is 0.1 to 0.4 milligram per deciliter. It is conjugated or soluble bilirubin, indirect bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin. The normal range is 0.2 to 0.7 milligram per deciliter. So these are the normal levels of serum bilirubin level when the total bilirubin is less than 1.2 usually we do not go for the estimation of direct or indirect but when it crosses 1.2 or more both direct and indirect components are determined and estimated nowadays the automatic analyzing machines they are performing and on command automatically they give the results but the basic reaction you should understand at this level because it is sometime asked the bilirubin is determined by one den berg reaction vdb one den berg reaction in which erlich a german physician used a diazo reagent so it is Ehrlich's diazo reagent which reacts with the bilirubin direct or indirect and gives you the red color which is estimated colorimetrically either in a simple way in our lab or by automatic machine the direct conjugated bilirubin gives react a red color within one minute which can be determined by colorimeter but total bilirubin is estimated when methanol is added when methanol is added the color is produced due to total bilirubin both direct and indirect so when total bilirubin concentration is determined and direct bilirubin concentration is determined and we subtract from total the direct one in concentration of indirect unconjugated bilirubin can be determined. Now we'll talk about the jaundice. Jaundice is a yellow staining of skin and sclery due to hyperbilirubinemia. 
this joint is is not a disease but it is a sign when doctor notices it or it could be a symptom when a patient himself detects and tells the doctor that there is a yellow coloration of the sclery or the mucous membrane what causes hyper bilirubinemia or increased levels of plasma bilirubin there are three major processes either there is a fault in the uptake conjugation or secretion over production of bilirubin is there by the reticulo endothelial system compromising the uptake or there could be a failure of hepatocyte to conjugate that is conjugation and finally there could be obstruction of biliary excretion into the stenian in intestine so that is the process of secretion so three major processes could be involved in increasing the plasma bilirubin level uptake conjugation or secretion uptake is impaired incomplete or absent conjugation and partial or total secretion of bile into the intestine this slide is taken from the harper where three major processes uptake secretion and conjugation are described along with the, some clinical conditions these three processes are responsible for the transfer of bilirubin from blood into the bile if imbalance in uptake and conjugation takes place there is indirect hyperbilirubinemia or indirect bilirubin is raised while here in this case third process the direct bilirubin is raised in the blood the common cause of imbalance in uptake is the overproduction of c bilirubin due to for example in hemolytic anemia the so much bilirubin is produced that the liver cannot take up the bilirubin for the conjugation and this overproduction the beyond the limit of the liver causes indirect hyper bilirubinemia in the second process that is of conjugation there is partial or complete absence of conjugating enzyme bilirubin ugt its clinical conditions are neonatal jaundice or physiological jaundice where the enzyme conjugating enzyme ugt is not so much produced to cope up with the conjugation and this physiological jaundice automatically or slowly resolved so it is called it is not harmful until unless it reaches to a toxic level so it is called neonatal jaundice or physiological jaundice toxic jaundice include drug induced toxins and other two clinical conditions viral hepatitis and cirrhosis are also included into this clinical group causing the jaundice while the kriglek rajar syndrome and gilbert syndrome they are genetic disorders autosomal recessive disorders due to mutation in the genes coding for the conjugating enzyme bilirubin u g t kriglek rajar syndrome is of two type one and two the one is rare and it fatal and 
the lifespan of the child is usually up to the age of 15 months. Type 2, there is partial activity of conjugating enzyme, bilirubin, UTT, and it is treatable by the use of phenobarbital drug. In the Gilbert syndrome, it is relatively prevalent than the toxic joints. About 30% activity of the bilirubin UGT is retained and it is a harmless condition. The third process, secretion. Secretion of conjugated bilirubin from the hepatocyte into the bile calliculi and ultimately into the bile. When genetic disorder, dubin johnson syndrome is seen where mutation takes place for a protein, MRP2, multidrug resistant protein 2. This MRP2 protein is responsible for the excretion of conjugated bilirubin from the hepatocyte into the bile duct tube. So, three main processes uptake causing indirect or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Second process, conjugation imbalance is causing indirect or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. While if secretion is compromised, there is because the conjugation completes and there is high level of bilirubin diglucuronide. So there is in compromised secretion, there is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. No doubt later on we will discuss the uh, further clinical conditions beyond the bile ductule and bile calaniculi. After understanding of pathophysiology of heme catabolism and jaundice, we can classify the jaundice into three kinds. Prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. In prehepatic, the causes are in the blood, so it is hemolytic jaundice. When liver cells are involved, it is hepatocellular or hepatic jaundice. And if obstruction is there, it is obstructive or post-hepatic jaundice. Clinical features on history. Patient may give the history of genetic disorders in the family. We have already briefly discussed the genetic syndromes causing the hyperbilirubinemia. Main symptoms are fever, vomiting, and jaundice. Common cause is hepatitis A, which is self-limiting. If there is a development of obstructive symptoms and patient is not improving, then there could be viral hepatitis, which could be diagnosed by the hepatitis markers and hepatitis B and C are the common causes. Patient may come with a severe abdominal colic. Colic pain is intermittent pain, unbearable pain due to gallstone impacted in the bile duct or patient can give the history of epigastric mass or weight loss. This weight loss and epigastric mass could be due to the malignancy of the head of the pancreas. Here is the list of laboratory tests for the diagnosis and prognosis of jaundice. And this is how biochemistry is related with medicine 
and this relationship is two-way street biochemistry helping the diagnosis and prognosis of diseases and input of diseases helps in the development of biochemical markers and the better explanation at the molecular level the laboratory tests are lfts serum total proteins urine dr cbc pt and aptt hemoglobin electrophore hemoglobin electrophoresis the blood ultrasound and liver biopsy liver function tests are a group of tests having five to seven markers or components having individual importance the first component is the estimation of serum bilirubin which helps to diagnose conjugated or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia sgpt serum glutamate pyruvate transamine is, is the old name and new name is alt alanine amino transferase specific for liver diseases though found in heart and kidneys sgot serum glutamate oxaloacetate transamine is new name is ast aspartate trans amino transferase sgot is also raised in liver diseases but it's not so sensitive marker because it also equally raised in diseases of kidney and heart serum alkaline phosphatase or alp is the main enzyme mainly increase in obstructive jaundice in obstructive jaundice or post hepatic jaundice this biochemical marker is having high specificity and sensitivity for the diagnosis as well as prognosis of obstructive jaundice gamma gt gamma glutamyl gamma glutamyl transferase ggt is having importance in cirrhosis of liver but both simultaneously are raised alkaline phosphatase and gamma gt are raised simultaneously because both are secreted from the sinusoidal cells in the hepatocyte serum total protein and ag ratio it is also a one of the important test in the diagnosis and prognosis of jaundice and function of the liver when hepatocellular jaundice or there is a damage to the liver total proteins are decreased in the serum or in the plasma albumin is decreased globulin is increased and this ag ratio is disturbed urine dr for bilirubin and urobilinogen explain later on cbc complete blood count to see anemia pt and aptt these two tests are for the function of the protein uh, lip, uh, protein synthesis especially the coagulation proteins or factors synthesized by the liver hemoglobin hemoglobin electrophoresis may help in the diagnosis genetic disorders of blood diseases or hemolytic anemias ultrasound gall bladder gives you the presence of gall stone in the gall bladder or impacted gall stone into the common bile duct this is the pathological test or microscopic test liver biopsy 
and it is very helpful in cirrhosis, that is the fibrosis of the hepatocyte and shrinkage of the liver and the cancers of liver which are called hepatomas. This is the diagrammatic explanation of prehepatic or hemolytic jaundice. The description is here. I will explain the diagram. Hemolysis is beyond the limit of conjugation of liver. So unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia is there. But conjugation in the hepatocytes is perfect. So the excretion into a small intestine is normal, producing the stercobilin in the feces. These are the major pathways. But the minor one is enterohepatic circulation and excretion of urobilinogen in the urine in the form of urobilin. The clinical conditions are enzymes of glycolytic pathway which cause hemolytic anemia. There could be deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, G6PD deficiency or there could be a deficiency of a kinase called pyruvate kinase. This glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is commonly seen in Parsis in Pakistan. Or there is structurally abnormal RPCs due to abnormal hemoglobins, say for example, sickle cell disease and thalassemia. And one of the infective disease, malaria caused by the mosquitoes, if untreated, may also cause excessive or increased hemolytic anemia. Hepatocellular jaundice is explained in the diagram. There is also unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia because conjugation is compromised and less conjugation cannot cope up with the unconjugated bilirubin in the blood. Conjugated bilirubin is formed and excreted into the intestine to be excreted into feces. But the other minor pathways are there for intrahepatic circulation and excretion into the urine. One of the pathways is presence of conjugated bilirubin in the blood and also in the urine. This conjugated bilirubin is the efflux because there is Intrahepatic cholestasis, the liver cells are enlarged and swollen, and there is intrahepatic cholestasis resulting in hyperbilirubinemia of conjugated bilirubin, which appears in the urine. Clinical conditions are cirrhosis or hepatitis, especially B and C, and genetic disorders, as already explained or briefly describe Gilbert Rotor Kriglak Najar syndrome, which will be helpful in your clinical years. Post-hepatic or obstructive jaundice. In this type of jaundice, there is an interruption to the excretion of bile. The most common causes are gallstones and CA pancreatic head. This is type of a colluric jaundice, dark colored urine, colluric jaundice. A dark colored uni, urine is due to the presence of conjugated bilirubin or simply the bilirubin in the urine. Conjugated bilirubin due to obstruction is not excreted into the gut 
so the there is indigestion of fat causing the steatoria bulky stool and stercobilin and urobilinogen are absent producing the clay colored pale in colored stool bulky stool because due to steatoria main enzyme which is raised is alp alkaline phosphatase very specific very diagnostic for obstructive type of jaundice simultaneous release of gamma gt is there because site of production of both the enzymes is the same bilirubin direct conjugated bilirubin or simply bilirubin comes into the urine producing dark red uh, dark color of urine yellow color which is labeled as choleric jaundice after explaining the diagram diagrammatic presentations on three types of jaundice here is the brief description and reflecting choleuria or echoluric jaundice and some description of enzymes specific for the liver diseases this brief description is for the recall and for the ready reference which you can read and recall this table is for the results in normal persons and in three conditions of jaundice normally direct bilirubin is 0.1 to 0.4 mg per deciliter indirect 0.2 to 0.7 and total is 0.1 to 1.2 mg per deciliter normally urobilinogen is present in the urine bilirubin is absent because there is no regurgitation of conjugated bilirubin in the blood fecal urobilinogen is 40 to 2 80 mg per 24 hours giving the typical brown color of the feces i explain only the hemolytic anemia while the two other conditions can be interpreted by yourself or later on in the clinical classes in hemolytic anemia there is increased indirect bilirubin in the serum because of the overproduction of bilirubin beyond the limit of conjugation of the liver urine urobilinogen and fecal urobilinogen are increased because conjugation is more normal and more and more bilirubin is taken up by the liver and conjugated the urine bilirubin or conjugated bilirubin in the urine is absent because the obstructive element hepatic or extra hepatic is not there similarly you can get the interpretation of hepatitis and you can know the interpretation in the obstructive jaundice because of the time shortage i can't explain it at this stage but if you follow the previous slides you can interpret it very well physiological jaundice in newborns it is also called icterus neonatorum it is commonly seen in the newborns and resolved itself within two or three weeks or maximum four weeks newborn infants particularly if premature they often accumulate bilirubin just because of the activity of hepatic bilirubin glucuronyl transferase or bilirubin ugt is low at birth and with the due course of two three or four weeks maximum it reaches at the 
adult level. This increased bilirubin due to hemolysis in infants is carried by albumin. And this increased bilirubin crosses the carrying capacity of albumin that is around 20 milligram per deciliter total bilirubin is found then the bilirubin cannot be carried by the albumin and it diffuses into the basal ganglia and causes encephalopathy which is a, an irreversible pathology and change in the newborns and they, it should be prevented by trans exchange transfusion of the blood but if it is less than 20 milligram it could be treated by phototherapy the newborn or baby is exposed to below fluorescent light or sunlight even converting bilirubin to soluble isomers known as photoisomers which are excreted which are soluble and excreted in the urine and feces without conjugation in the liver here is also a key concept map you can understand and remember by going through three types but there is only one addition it is of new natal jaundice where the bilirubin is formed excessive bilirubin is formed but conjugation is not there or it is less increasing the unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia which is treated by phototherapy by the exposure to fluorescent blue light thank you the resource is from harper's illustrated biochemistry and lipin cord illustrated biochemistry i hope you will try your level best and pay full attention to understand this important topic of hemoglobin degradation and jaundice and keep yourself safe and others.